do it. All oh. right. Okay. And there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I usually start out by introducing myself, but I don't need to this week because if you don't know me, babe, then somebody yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anyway, so I will let you introduce yourself, though. Okay. Uh, so I'm Kelly Duffy. I um, I'm a powerlifter. Hey, big surprise there, right? Um, I've been powerlifting for like four years, I think now. Not too, not too super long. Um, uh, I live with the Gorilla Pack in front of New York. Um, I'm a mom. Uh, I have a husband, family, the whole nine yards, um, two dogs, fenced in yard, right? <laughs> um, I don't also, know, with I a little white, white picket fence. Yeah, you know, <laughs> your, your typical uh, late 30s lady. <laughs> there we go. So, um, and I ask this question of everybody. Um, <clears throat> the men in our sport grew up watching Strongman and the Arnold and, you know, there were magazines on every shelf and that's how most of them got introduced to this sport. Um, how were you introduced to powerlifting and what was that moment that you decided that you wanted to be a, a lifter or strong or just the badass that you are? I feel like all of my life, I've always been like the heavier set girl, you know what I mean? So I never knew anything about strength training or sports and strength training or anything like that um I tried to do track once and they were like here have a shot put because <laughs> you're not gonna be running um and I actually didn't know anything about it up until uh well I guess it's been longer than four years five years ago then five years ago uh I met a mom at uh my son's preschool and we had become friends on Facebook and it was just kind of one of those acquaintance things and then a couple of years later she posted a video of her husband as Jean Putnam it is Jean Putnam and I was like that's kind of that's kind of cool I did you say like I could squatting do that. yes <laughs> squatting did he know what he was doing he did he used to do full power he did he did okay. it is true it is true are you sure he wasn't oh. just standing up off the couch, Barry said? We call it benching with your legs. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there, there you go. That makes more sense. <laughs> so I and for anybody, video. For anybody <laughs> watching this that doesn't know, we're referring to Richie Putnam. He's uh, a thousand pound bencher and uh, the bench freak. So just yes. in case anybody doesn't know. <clears throat> anyway. He does have a great squat. He's he's squatted 925. I just want to put that out there. You know, maybe he wants to get back in full power someday. You never know. <laughs> so I saw the video and I was like, so I, and I sent her a message and I was like, hey, like, what is that? Like, have you ever done that before? Like, and she was like, oh yeah, you slipped. Um, come lift with my husband. And I was like, okay, I'll come. Then like five weeks went by because I was like, I don't really know these people. Do I want to just show up at their house? They literally lift in a garage at the back of their house. And then she'd message me on lifting nights and be like, hey, are you going to come? And I'd make up some stupid excuse. And uh, dogs, sorry. Hey. And then, um, Kat, can you give them a bone or something? Um, and then one Monday night, she messaged me and she was like, hey, are you going to come? And I was like, fuck it. I, I want to try it. So I'll just go and do it. And I literally will never forget the day that I walked into the gym <laughs> and then my dog broke away. <laughs> I will never forget the day that I walked into the gym because it was men, all men. There was not a single woman in the gym, none. <laughs> so I walked in and I was like, oh my God. And it was like loud music. And they were like these big, huge men. And I had no, I did literally didn't know a single soul at all. And I left there and I was like, I fucking love this. <laughs> and then when I went back, there was another woman there eventually. But the first time I went, there was no one. <laughs> awesome. So let's talk a little bit about the Gorilla Pack, because I feel like we can't leave that out. That That's truly, that's your family outside of of, um, of Pat and Riley. That's, that's your family. So let's talk a little bit about them and your best yep. friend, Mr. Odell. And I promise I didn't <laughs> call him last night. 
<laughs> he was like, you got to tell this story and tell this story. And tell, I'm like, oh God, Keith, we don't have time to hear about all of the stories that we have because- Oh, Barry and I got all day. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a lot of stories. Um, so what's funny is Mr. Odell actually was not part of the grill pack when I joined. Really? Um, yes. So- um, Hi, Pat. Hi. <laughs> he actually, um, well, he had lifted with Rich before and then they, he had moved to like Rhode Island or something crazy. And of all the places in the world, we did IPA Worlds my second year lifting with them, which was in Nova Scotia, Canada. And we showed up and it's like literally 16 hours away. And there was Keith. <laughs> wow. And I actually knew Keith from high school, my high school. Oh, wow. So I was like, hey, Keith. And then he he knew Richie and I was like how do you know Richie <laughs> so it was just kind of and then we and then he started back lifting with us and you know but um the gorilla pack is I feel like in powerlifting it's like a different breed <laughs> like our kids are friends together we do everything together like we have events together we go to dinner together like it is not just a gym it's, right. it is our life I mean, yeah, it's, it's what it's supposed to be. It's what a team is supposed to be. And um, it's what our team here in, in Texas, unfortunately, we're so spread out over such a big state, but yeah. you know, that, that's how we are when we are able to be in the same city together. Like, I know if I called one of them right now, because I don't know, I'm stranded on the side of the road or something was happening, like they would drop everything that they were doing to come and help me. And we're all so lucky to have rich who you know opens his house to us right and you know and it doesn't matter if you lift only the bar right you, you lift whatever would, you lift you know barry said he would drop everything just so you know you might be stranded on the side of the road for a little <laughs> while but he would be well, there. Pat, pat, i'm like getting ready and pat's like where where are you going for your interview and i'm like it's on the computer and he's like i'm like she's in texas and <laughs> We're meeting down at the local Starbucks. We're going to meet halfway. Yeah, our team is a lot like that down here. Like if, if something were to ever happen to Barry Lake or to myself or, you know, um, even with me being sick, you know, um, yeah, I, I feel like we're, we've, we've kind of built that same down here, which is one of the reasons I wanted to bring up the gorilla pack, because I think until you have a one of us you find they, everybody found out they attacked us all yeah yeah that's what he just said when you you attack one of us everybody found out you attack us all yep um like yeah. you in this sport especially if you're geared uh in general you literally cannot do what you want to do without a team right you can't it yeah. is impossible yeah and um and I can tell you during COVID when we were not lifting together, I can only like, you know, hand off 185 to myself. <laughs> right. Well, and, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very tough to train alone. Um, you know, the back of my shirt says strong, alone, unstoppable together. And, and it's, yep. it's true. Um, Absolutely. You know, I know that when um, we did Baddest Venger last year, um, somebody actually asked me why are there so many of you guys here i'm like that's you know that's how we travel yeah we're a family that that's how we we travel we you know it, it, there's there's people to handle there's people to make sure kids are fed there's people to make sure lifters are fed like it, it's not just a you know it, it's not just i'm going to show up and lift so no yeah. i literally would never ever do a meet if I didn't have reach, Rich and Keith with me. I wouldn't. It, it, nope. The answer would be a hard no for me. Well, and let's talk about some of your meets. Um, I know you in PA um, you had, was a little bit emotional for you for a few minutes. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't know all the struggles. I won't lie because I was running the table, but I know that at one point, um, wow. I, th I don't know if it was Keith or Pat, but one of them came over and asked me about, you know, you taking the same weight again. And I remember telling you that I was going to move you to the end of the round so that you could take a break. And there was just this overwhelming sense of, 
oh wait I can breathe um, yeah you, know, you and I had talked prior to that meet some and you were really nervous about that meet you weren't sure what you could do and girl <laughs> I am really nervous every single beat <laughs> It is not a secret. Everyone in the gym knows. I literally hate meats. I girl, it took I me forever them. to get you to give me your opener. Yeah, I hate meats. Like it is the worst thing in the entire world. I hate it so much. I don't so know good. what it is. I, I I don't know what it is. I can get up and teach Zumba to hundreds of people, and I have absolutely no problem. I will get up and I will talk to to. I will give a speech. You asked me to lift in front of people and my, I I literally melt down. I don't know why. I put so much pressure on myself, like unnecessary pressure. Like it's not even like, right. I. my team doesn't care if I bomb. Nobody cares if I bomb, right. except for me. <laughs> right. But right. like I put this unnecessary, I the week before I meet, I break out in hives. I throw up, I poop my pants. <laughs> So it's bad. <laughs> and, and let's just let's just throw some stats out there. You've done 16 meets. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have 16, right? Was it 16 or 17? Uh, I think Probably. It was 16 in there. Yeah, it was you have meets bombed too. one time in huh? 16 meets. You took, one you mm -hmm. took second and I place. hurt myself. <laughs> you took second place one time in 16 meets and you finished yeah. first. 14 times yeah that sounds about right i know it's ridiculous and i don't know why i and i i can't honestly the last meet the pennsylvania meet was probably the calmest i've ever been at a meet and i was still a mess and Sorry. i think i think that's a i think that's a, a female brain thing too i think we put a lot more pressure on ourselves than everybody else does as well yeah do you agree for sure a hundred percent we've got it got it got to a point where like i felt like people expected oh you know she benches 500 pounds wait wait and see and i'm like oh god like all these people so people would come up to me at meets and be like oh i can't wait to see you lift and i'd be like <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how like you know, like Leah and Ryan and I, I don't know, like how, how they don't get. <laughs> so I just can't things. wait to watch your smile walk in the door. Cause like if, so anybody that's watching this, that hasn't been at a meet with you, like you're infectious. Um, even, even when you're nervous, like you're just no, happy. It. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Barry said, not like syphilis. <laughs> Um, you know, maybe a little like syphilis. Okay, maybe a little like syphilis. <laughs> you know, whatever. Hey, um, you, you're just happy, um, yeah. and I love that. Um, like I running a meet is stressful for me. Like oh, I know, girl. Listen, I'm gonna tell you what I I cry at almost every one of them. <laughs> At some point, there are going to be tears, and yep. it's going to be over something so stupid. But there are going to be tears. Like that's that's how I get it out. Um, <laughs> and just like in PA, so it, PA was really bad for me. I was yeah. very, very, very sick. Um, very sick. And I don't know that anybody knew just how sick I was outside of Barry and Hadley. I don't know that Rob even knew how sick I was. Um, PA almost killed me. Um, and to get up at, you know, three thirty, four o'clock in the morning and get dressed and just walk from the hotel to the conference room took everything I had. Um, cause at the time, like I still wasn't taking in any nutrition. I didn't have my pickling yet. Like I was, it was bad. And I remember seeing you come in the door and I mean, it was, we were in a pretty good sized room and there was just this flood of, Hey, it's going to be okay. Kelly's here now. Like if I break down, Kelly's here. If I need I to cry, <laughs> Kelly's here. If I want to dance, Kelly's here. And so anybody that hasn't been at a meet with you, like y'all are missing out. Like it's, <laughs> I remember you. dancing at the Arnold and, you know, and listen, the Arnold was stressful too. None of us knowing whether or not we were even going to be able to get in there. Oh, and, I know. You know, like probably 
one of the most the probably one of the best times I've had. So anyway, we're supposed that to that is the Arnold is the key story. <laughs> oh, okay. So tell me the key story then. Let's let's talk about the key story. Um the Arnold was a very bad time for me. <laughs> <laughs> so my uh my Airbnb my shirt, my singlet, all of my stuff. I remember this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you tell the story. It was all uh, <clears throat> locked in my Airbnb at 5 a.m. And we were on our way to the meet. And I literally had nothing. I had no shirt. I had no singlet. I had no sneakers. I had nothing. So... Keith makes fun of me now, which is totally fine, but I was literally on my hands and knees crying. I remember that. that <laughs> it was horrible. And I, at that point, was so shot mentally that I had just been like, I'm not, I'm not doing this. And I got there and literally lifters who I didn't know were like, here's my belt. Here's my shoes. Here's my shirt. Here's, England. you know, and I lifted. And everybody else's stuff that was not on my own, <laughs> I still managed to get some lifts in. I did not win, but it was totally okay because Jean won and it was wonderful and fantastic. But it was literally like the worst day ever. <laughs> Weren't the keys like locked in your rental car or something? Yes. So we had to call an Uber to even get there. Yeah. It was so bad. And Keith's like, break a window. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't break a window. <laughs> I remember that. That might be the yeah. only time I remember seeing you at a meet that like you were and oh yeah, for lack of better words, like grouchy, like not towards me, but like you were you were you were struggling that day. I forgot oh, about that. I still lifted and I still did okay. You, you know, you, you I, it just who baby that but was it's those times that you learn what a family this this sport really is. Um because exactly we had a similar story, kind of similar. Um, we found out during like the, I don't know, second um, round of flights or second round of squats that Trent could not use the shirt because he had taken his F8 and he, we had asked ahead of time. If I he, remember. If he, and then he had to switch to the regular. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jeff Schellenberger left the Arnold, went back to his Airbnb, got his metal shirt, brought it back. Trent had not, I don't know that he had lifted in a poly in months. Mm -hmm. and, um, the only poly he had, he had lifted in was a single ply katana. Yeah, he had only ever lifted in a single ply katana. He had never lifted in a, in a multi-ply poly mm -hmm. shirt at all. And, okay. um, you know, we're we're freaking out. Like, I mean, I know how to teach him how to lift in a, in a multiply. I don't know how to teach him how to do it in 30 minutes before he gets on the stage at the Arnold. Exactly. Um, yeah. You know, and Jeff went and got that shirt, brought it back and it fit. And Richie rallied around us and got the collar down where he needed it and helped us set it. Because again, you know, I, I, you you have to learn somebody before you can set their shirt properly and everything else so yeah that i'll tell you what that those few days at the arnold were definitely stressful time. yes it takes a village it absolutely does yes and i said i i wasn't going to do the arnold again after that i've done i've done the arnold three times now <clears throat> and i'm doing the arnold again <laughs> So, and, and that's, that's a conversation we're going to have off camera um, because I have some really big plans for the ladies that have benched over 500. Um, talk to Keith a little bit. Um, and I, I'm not sure how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, where it's going to happen. Um, we, we talked about the Arnold, but with you being committed to last man standing, um, we may... Um, do we're it gonna do we're gonna do something for for the women um we're gonna do a thing and and you have to be there you don't have I'll to be bench there. Five. i will be there i will you be can, there you can bench 135 i don't care but you <laughs> have to be there. i need your smile so what happens to me now like um when i get heavier in the shirts 
um, it gets to this point where it's like, I can't open safe anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm such a head case that like me not being able to open in a tight enough shirt to feel safe. Like if I open over 500, I'm immediately like breaking out in hives. <laughs> That's why I told then, you PA, open it 300. Yeah. <laughs> well, luckily I'm, I'm really glad that I chose to open with 455 there because I just, I didn't have a great day and I was really pleased to have a lift in. So, <laughs> but that was only in two ply. So yeah. So, you know, well, all right, let's talk a little more about your lifting and, and food. I knew we were going to do this yap thing and that's okay because I, I love it because I don't get to yap with you very often. <laughs> Um, so, um, you know, I, I, I ask people where they see themselves in five years and 10 years. Um, I know you well enough to know that you say, I'm never doing this again. And then you do it again. Um, yeah, and I know, your, I know your gorilla pack family well enough to know that you guys will still be doing this in 10 years. So I guess my question for you is more, um, what are the goals that you've set for yourself in lifting? Um, well, honestly for a long time I was like I need to get that 600 pound bench you know um and it's still you know I want to get that 600 pound bench <laughs> that's like you know that's the ultimate goal really I just started squatting again so <laughs> maybe maybe doing a full power maybe in the, in the future would be good um in September at Shunnels Barry just started squatting again too, and he's going to do full power in New York at Shauna's 9-11 meet next September. So, Hey, I wouldn't rule it out. You know, you know, me and squats, we're friends. Me and deadlifts, we're not friends. <laughs> See, deadlifts are the best because you just have to pick it up and put it down. Uh, yes. These short arms are great for bench. <laughs> Deadlift, not so much. <laughs> That's why you go sumo yeah but you know maybe someday full power meet but that that 600 pound bench is will always be my goal until i get there <laughs> so how and if i could ever get comfortable in a three ply shirt a, a four ply 600 would be probably easy if i can manage to <laughs> but your get there. Team, you know your your team's really um they're really supportive in how the lifter feels in their- That is a bold face lie. Rich Putnam does not care how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Odell cares how you feel. Rich Putnam is like, oh, your arm hurts? Who cares? Throw another 100 your, pounds on your I'm, fine. I meant your <laughs> comfort level internally. Like if you don't yes. feel safe, they care. I- it's funny because people will say like, oh my God, that's so much weight. Don't you get afraid? Like, aren't you? I literally never, ever felt scared in lifting ever. I've seen never. your spotters. Nervous? Absolutely. Scared? Never. A hundred percent. I know my team knows when I'm fucking up before I know that I'm fucking up. Like that's how in tuned we are with us. I know what when something's not right on rich and then he'll sit up and i'll be like hey xyz and he's like yep <laughs> like right. it's just we've been together so long we watch each other so long we know exactly. yeah and barry and i are like that um which i can't lift now but i he can absolutely he'll sit up from something and he'll look at me like what just happened yeah and yeah um and you know I, that picture that you sent me that I posted yesterday, and I don't know, you know, people that don't know you or know much about us period. Um, so in that picture, your husband is, um, on one side, Keith Odell is on the other and Rich is your handoff man. So I mean, your, your handoff guy and your spotters are your family, like exactly legitimately your best friend, your coach and your husband. Yep. Um, so yeah, I, I can understand the not being afraid because, if anybody's going to let something happen to you, it's not those three. Absolutely. It's really funny because Rich and Keith are like the perfect combination for lifting together because 
Keith is the one who, you know, if something is a little off or like, you know, he's like the conservative one and then Rich is like the pusher. So like them together is like the perfect combination. <laughs> I love watching them together as well when either one of them are lifting or when anybody on their team's lifting, like they're just so proud. Yeah, for sure. No matter what the outcome of the bench is, like they're just, they're just proud. So um, <clears throat> How do you feel about our sport right now and um, its prog progression of female power lifters? Because we're we're here. I, honestly, like, I feel like right now in the sport, the women are kind of showing up the men, really, honestly. Like, there are some girls out there that are, you know, they're they're pushing it. They They are breaking boundaries. Like, right now, if you look, like the best lifters that are out there, a lot of them are female, you know, Leah, Leah is like, I don't even have words. Like, I don't even have words for how amazing she is. Like, I never, ever in my entire life would think that a female would squat 900 pounds. And now I'm like, that bitch is going to squat a thousand pounds <gasps> and, you and she's going to do it. I sat down to talk to her and she's just like, yeah, you know, like she's so down to earth. And so like, I, I love her, you know, um, I met her for the first time with the Arnold, my horrible Arnold. I had never met her before. I had only followed her on Instagram <clears throat> and I was like, I don't know you, but I love you. And she's like, I love you too. <laughs> Yeah, you it guys, like, y'all's personality is a lot of like, Chad Burdett told me, he's like, it's going to be one of your favorite interviews. And he was right. Like, it really was like, she's just so sweet and happy and just, yeah. And was, the girls in this sport, like, they're not like bitchy. Do you know what I mean? They're yeah, like. They're not competitive. I know. And we not see everybody succeed. Yeah. It's awesome. It's really awesome. But I would say that right now the women are edging out the men i think <laughs> um the the picture from our pa meet of you and shauna and allison and april and i believe um rayanne was in there as well yep um barry said i feel like kelly's directing that finger at me i was like well maybe she is <laughs> <laughs> never to barry never never <laughs> never um and and that picture is like really special to me because I'm like I'm in this <laughs> yeah. I know but like you sit back and you're like I'm in this picture <laughs> like that's a big deal like it's just a picture but to me it, oh, it it's not just everything <laughs> yeah it's yeah. not just a picture and I feel like um you know um I'm running into that with these interviews you know I'm, I'm asking you know hey you will you sit down and talk to me and these people are thanking me i'm like why are you thanking me like i'm getting to sit down and talk to you know allison hind and and april mathis and um leah reichman and kathleen james and like you know sherry felder i mean sherry's my best friend so i can talk to her anytime i want but to get to yeah. sit down and, and talk to her about her lifting career and you know dina tollefson and you know, Ariel Rangel. And, you know, I've talked to all these women who are doing such amazing things and they're like, thank you so much for doing this. I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. Thank you. Yeah. So, no, yeah, that, that picture was, I, it was huge and it was, it was, I really like it. So. Me, me too. <laughs> you should, but yes, you deserve to be there. Like you've worked really hard. I mean, yeah, I've been watching you for, I'm always like, me? <laughs> I mean, December will be three years that we've known yeah. each other because it was yep. yeah it was worlds three years ago we're just gonna say that meet your husband came up to me at that meet and he was like I've never I've never seen a female bench that much and I was like me <laughs> like, I still have trouble like you know like, yeah are you talking to me? <laughs> I was like, wow, no one just, ever said that to me. <laughs> he just said there are very few people that ever impressed me and you were one of them. He's, he's kind of a fan of yours. 
Yes, I love him. <laughs> a lot too. <laughs> so when was your first meet? And I would ask, it was it raw or equipped? But I'm I'm fairly certain it was. Was it raw? It was raw. It was raw. Really? It was raw and I don't even want to tell you what I did because it was horrible. <laughs> no, and I was so proud of myself. My first meet. I and I'll I I pooped my pants and threw up and I did the whole thing my very first meet and I do the same thing, uh, but <laughs> I still do it. Uh, my first meet was in 2018. No, 2017. 2017, I think. Yeah, 2017. And it was an RPS meet with, oh. but. Um, <laughs> Okay, you just said um, no, it was 2016. It was in Vermont. Yep, 2016. You, there you go. Thanks. Fanboy. I think I think I benched 165, maybe. 170. 170. He said. 170. And I I squatted maybe 225. And I think I pulled 300, something around in there. <laughs> and I remember I have video of that 170 bench, and it was ugly, ugly, ugly. And I was so freaking proud of myself over that. But, you know, at that point. Awesome. And then my first uh, geared me, I actually, <laughs> I bombed my squat on my first geared me. And uh, I was in Pennsylvania and I didn't really know even like the rules at that point in time like I had no idea and um I up down on my squat and I got all red lighted and I was like what what <laughs> I went down I came up everything was great and then that's what happened and then oh I was just a head case after that and then I went in the back and I'm like it's fine I'm on a bench and it's fine and Richie is like you bombed you don't get to bench <laughs> they let me keep going and I did push ball but uh and that is actually where I met Bob Merck at that meet it was the first time I ever met Bob Merck and um I won't ever forget because he was so nice to me He's and I was so guy. upset and he was so nice to me that I loved him immediately I was like I don't know who this man is at all but he's wonderful and then I yeah. was like oh shit he's like a pretty good lifter <laughs> yeah he's pretty good He's not bad. <laughs> he does now, okay. <laughs> he's pretty good. Yeah. And now, and now, you know, that like, he was, I, yeah, he was another one at the Arnold that um, helped us with, with Trent and kind of get him, you know, back level. And cause that, that shirt thing threw him for a loop mentally. Oh, for sure. So. But yeah, Bob is, Bob is like, you know, one of my favorite people now. And I, like to train at his house i haven't been there since covid but you know right. and you know there's so many good people in this sport <laughs> there really are there there, there yeah. really are a, so many good people i'm very i think that i only benched 275 in my first geared me i think i'm pretty sure i'll tell you in just a second fanboy I, miss, I just missed 300 i think yeah 275 in my first geared um, <clears throat> so I know some of your favorite power lifters, but let's, yeah, 275. he said 275, yep. let's venture outside of our little circle. Um, who are some of your favorite, both male and female that you like to, you know, see or watch or some that you've never met that you would like to, to meet? Um, well, Bob Merck is my favorite. I love him so much, but you know, <laughs> um, I, Leah, oh obviously i've only met her a few times but i think she's the bee's knees i freaking love heidi howard oh isn't she the oh, best she's so cute she is i love her so much i love her i love watching her lift i love i love her personality i love her and someone who i've never met before and i enjoy her so much i cannot wait until one day i get to meet her is tara duncan Oh, I love her. She is, she is like, 
the most empowering, the most fun. Like, I, I love her. I love her personality. I love how she has fun in life. I love that she cares about lifting and that she cares about female and lifting and she's always posting and trying to promote female positivity and body positivity and I fucking love her <laughs> yeah I um I, I want to sit down with her as well but yeah so um <clears throat> we went out on um Barry and Rob and Heidi and Hadley and I all went out on the boat the Thursday before we started weigh-ins on Friday because like we were all just spent yeah. um you know we had all Rob had had a really rough week Barry and Hadley and I had driven up from Texas to PA um and Heidi couldn't check into her room yet so we're like all right let's take the boat out and um yeah like she's so just so so sweet so sweet oh, I love her I I um She's not as loud as we are. <laughs> no, no, she's not. <laughs> oh, sweet. So nice. And yeah, it was so much fun to get to watch her lift and um, like just amazing to watch her. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to, um, what did you say about Tara? She's a gym dancer. She, she, she is. Oh. She is. <laughs> That's what we say about Della Fave. <laughs> That makes sense. <laughs> There's a video of, of him dancing to uh is it Humpty Dance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, at one of the oh, New York meets. Um, so yeah, that's we we call them gym dancers. Just I I have to sneak a few songs into our playlist in the gym so I can dance the gym. <laughs> Well, and let's, let's talk about that because I want to talk about careers and hobbies and everything else, but, um, you, my friend are a Zumba teacher. Are you not? I am indeed a Zumba instructor. Yes. You have to be the world's most fun Zumba instructor. Like I, <laughs> I can't imagine that there's ever a dull moment in your class. So let's talk there, about Zumba for a few. You minutes. know, when the dull moment is, is when I'm teaching and then everybody has to turn around in the dance and I'm like, <gasps> and then they turn back around. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dull moment. <laughs> like, Oh, we're going to go in a circle. <clears throat> I'm going to die for a second. And then I'm back. <laughs> So how did you get into Zumba? I um, randomly took a class. I've been teaching Zumba for nine years, I think. It's been a long time for Zumba. Yeah. Um, I took a class at the Y and I had, I always felt like exercise wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. So like I just forced myself to do it, you know? And I took my first Zumba class and I was like, oh my God, that was so fun and I'm dying. <laughs> and I took them for a long time and then and then I decided to get certified and and I still love it still love it it's super fun um things have been like yeah wonky for gyms here in New York um so I actually I haven't been in the gym teaching since COVID hit I've actually been teaching outside at like local parks and stuff. And, uh, and honestly, it's yeah. been, it's been good for me. I make a lot more money than I do teaching in the gym and everybody gets to be outside and be together. It just sucks. Cause like, I can't really teach from like November to like March. I usually start back up, but could, it's okay. You could fly South for the winter. Yes, I should. <laughs> But like, honestly, and I don't know how it is in Texas or any of the other states, the gyms around here haven't really picked back up. So like, I'll see other people who are teaching and they have like three people in their class. And like, I'll be honest, we live in a small town in Texas and we are like, we did our 14 day quarantine and we're done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we don't yeah. feel good. We'll all stay home. Um, yeah. you know, we have vaccinated and unvaccinated people. We have mask and non-mask and we all just kind of go about our daily life. It's a very small like town and we're, we're just kind of like, Hey, listen, we're smart enough to figure out how to handle this. And we're just going to continue on with life. Um, here locally, yeah. the biggest problem I think is, especially for the girls who take my class, um, the, our gym membership used to be 20 bucks. And they're charging $50 a month now for the gym membership. 
since the pandemic. So it was like, and they're like, I really only go to the gym to take Kelly's class or, or like one or two other classes wow. and she charges three bucks. So well, I would rather pay the three bucks and hit classes when I can than pay $50 for a gym and Kelly's not teaching, you know? So it's yeah, like- Barry, Barry asked, why are they charging more? Is it cleaning protocols or is it just a lack of members or- <clears throat> I, th- I, kind of, I feel like it's like everything. Like they had Fine to do to like alive. special- yeah special filtration to- systems and then they have to do more cleaning and then on top of it they've lost so many members that like just trying to stay afloat for the people that still want to be yeah, there. yeah. yeah. i get it but oh yeah um there was a my home health nurse was here the other day and before she came she said she had to stop and get air in one of her tires and she stopped at the little five minute oil place oil change place and um the guy there was telling her that they had all just gotten a $5 an hour raise because people were quitting so fast um, yeah. that they needed, like they literally were going to have to close the doors. Um, and so they had just bumped all of their technicians. And this is like, what's that place called that five minute oil change, I think is what it's actually called. The new yeah, one, called take, five. take five. And they're making 1850 an hour there. And I was like, but they I'm, have, I'm gonna go change some oil <laughs> right <laughs> yeah um yeah, yeah Barry had to do the same thing he had to bump all of his his employees up um and I mean it was well within they it was well deserved but he you know he had employees just quitting right and left so yeah I mean I, I can see having to raise prices to keep employees to keep things clean absolutely yeah. but it's fine with me I teach my little classes outside and I have fun and everybody still comes and they pay their three bucks to do their class outside and we're happy as clams. <laughs> but, so, um, I used to teach like a, like a boot camp type class. Mm-hmm. I didn't start it up again this year, but I got to bring it back because I need it for myself. Not <laughs> like selfishly, like I need to kick it in a little bit more, you know? Well, and I think a lot of that's socializing too. Um, for sure. Yeah, like we're yeah. very social animals, and um, <clears throat> no, I can see that. One cannot no. live on powerlifting alone. You have to get your cardio in somewhere. <laughs> Did you hear that, Barry? <laughs> hey, Barry was running the bleachers at the football field. Yeah, there you go. Just a little cardio, you know. Yeah, Except always. for Rich Putnam doesn't do cardio. <laughs> well, so Barry <laughs> has a new coach um and she is pushing him way outside of his comfort zone nothing Um, wrong with that i love her huh and he loves it um he's squatting he's deadlifting he's obviously benching because i mean let's face it that's the only real lift that counts according to him but (laughs) um, he has lost 30 a little over 32 pounds look at you barry Oh, right. He's going to live for me. Yeah. How about that? (laughs) I know. Um, so what other hobbies do you have? I know you power lift and you Zumba and you boot camp and Riley, I think Riley plays soccer, correct? Yep. Soccer. And he does art class and he does drama. He's literally at play practice right now. And I am a total backstage mom. (laughs) Be right into that. No surprise there. Um, I, I'm not allowed to do anything else. <laughs> rich, rich, will t- rich, will, I really you want to know what my secret, secret dream to do is uh-huh. roller derby. You would be so good at roller derby. I know, right? Yeah. It would be so fun. So, but Rich is like, you're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> and my husband is like, you have to drop one other thing. If you want to do that, (laughs) listen, you could hurt yourself walking out the front door down the steps. Yeah, you're not kidding. But I think it would be so much fun. So that's like my secret, my secret dream hobby is roller derby. I think it would be awesome. But honestly, I work a lot and I don't have time for a whole lot else. (laughs) Yeah, I think um, that's, you know, as, as moms and, and lifters and, we uh we spread ourselves pretty thin yeah oh we do we we certainly do um i i only train powerlifting three days a week 
just three days a week. Um, and I Zumba two days a week. And that doesn't really leave a whole. No, that's lot five hours when you're. Yeah, when you're uh, when you're you know working fifty to sixty hours a week on top of it, it doesn't leave a whole lot of time. And your kid is in school and. Yeah. So, um, what was your favorite meet that you've done, and what was your biggest takeaway from that meet? Like, why was it your favorite? Mm-hmm. Do you want to know what? I honestly think my most favorite meet wasn't sanctioned that I ever did. Um, we have this local little place in Cooperstown and it's called Monster Bench and it's in one of the local gyms and it's it's so fun. We we didn't get to do it the last two years because of everything that was happening. But um, the whole gorilla pack comes. I mean, everybody. We all bring all of our families. My whole family comes, like my aunts, my uncles, my cousins. They wear one, they'll wear like gorilla costumes and <laughs> like it's the whole thing. And and um the last monster bench that we had, um we had two teams, a raw team and a gear team, because we have girls that lift we have girls that lift raw so we did both <clears throat> and i won overall raw bench and overall geared bench and the girl pack girls won raw team and geared team and it was the first time i ever benched 500 pounds even though it wasn't sanctions i i benched exactly 500 pounds and my whole family was there the whole girl pack was there and it was just like i i walked away from that like up here you know yeah. Even though it wasn't sanctioned, it's not a sanctioned meet, but like it was really the best day ever. That's awesome. A meet's a meet, whether it's sanctioned or not. A meet's a meet. <laughs> yeah. You probably broke out in hives and threw up and <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> I actually got my hand shut in a door that day. <laughs> oh, good times, good times. <laughs> But yeah, and we bring snacks and it's just, it's just, it was, it was, it was the best. That's awesome. Um, all right. So tell me some fun facts about you that I don't, I don't know that we've, but that now's when we need Keith. Oh, I know. Fun facts about me. I don't know. Huh. And you want to be a roller derby girl? Cause listen, I be when a- you do roller derby, I will be there in the front row. <laughs> I don't know. Usually when someone's like, Oh, tell me a fun fact about yourself. I'm like, I bench over 500 pounds. And they're always like, ah. <laughs> that's, that's my fun fact. I already knew that. <laughs> I know. I don't know. You already know about Zumba. Um, babe, I don't know. What's a fun fact about me? Tell me your secrets, Pat. <laughs> I'm allergic to everything. That, that can be my fun fact. <laughs> I belong in a bubble. I'm literally allergic to everything. Barry yes. said, "I got." Barry said, "I got nothing." Yeah, I that's awesome. it. I'm allergic to pineapple, honeydew, um, marshmallow, <laughs> um, artichokes, um, bees. <laughs> Strawberries have been like, oh, like if something just itches in my mouth, I'll still eat it. <laughs> You're welcome, Pat. (laughs) Barry said you're still okay with steak and pizza, so you're fine. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) I don't know. I guess that's my fun fact. I'm allergic to everything. I don't know. (laughs) Oh, magnetic eyelash glue, regular eyelash glue. (laughs) And yet you still manage to have like magnificent lashes. These are extensions. I know. (laughs) <laughs> jewels on them so yes so fun. I know, they were so pretty um so what uh, what advice do you have to any young younger lifters up and coming girls that want to that are either in the sport or want to get into this sport what's your advice to them I feel like I wish someone said to me like you don't have to weigh a certain amount. You don't have to lift a certain amount. You don't have to be a certain way. Just go out and do a meet. 
don't wait until you think you're strong enough. Don't wait until you think you're in the right weight class. It doesn't matter. Like none of that matters. Just go out and do it. Don't, don't worry about how much you lift because it's not, it's not important. It's important to get out and get into the sport. You know what I mean? What'd you say, Bear? I've learned that nobody cares. Like nobody cares what yeah. they are. They they will cheer for the 135er as much as they'll cheer for this, the 500 pounder. It doesn't matter. You got it. Are. If you're struggling, the whole room is is shouting. Yep, you got it. It, it literally doesn't matter how much you're lifting people will support you like don't be afraid of that and don't think that you know just because i had this thing in my brain when i first started that oh god i cannot be super heavyweight i can't i can't i need to get under you don't nobody cares nobody cares you don't have to just be you don't worry about what the scale says you know <clears throat> that's another thing I've noticed in women's lifting is the men have super heavy weight and women's is 198 plus. It's a oh, men's God. for women. Girl, when I first started, I was just, I, hello, I'm not a small girl. And I was just absolutely mortified at the fact that that's part of the reason why I did uh, RPS because they had 220 for women. So I was like, oh, at least I won't be super heavy weight it's okay (laughs) it's okay (laughs) it doesn't matter what you weigh you your worth is not your weight right um and and i guess that kind of goes into my next question is what advice do you have for the women that are already in the sport as far as any challenges that you've overcome you know within the sport mentally any of them um you know what advice do you have for women as far as as overcoming just the normal challenges that we face in this sport. Oh man. There's so- <laughs> it's like, like you get past that mental block of super heavyweight. And I asked that because, you know, before I got sick, I was super heavyweight myself. I feel like I, you get to a point where you're like, it doesn't matter what I weigh because I can bench 500 pounds. You know, like you get to a point where you realize nobody cares what you look like in a singlet. Nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody looks cares. good in a singlet. No one looks good in a singlet ever. Yeah. A girl who weighs 160 pounds doesn't look good in a singlet sometimes. Like, nobody. And, and everybody is different. Every, <clears throat> every single body is different and no one is perfect. And, and even people who, you know, weigh 120 pounds, have things about their body that they're self-conscious about. So I guess, you know, be comfortable with who you are is, is really the best advice. Don't think about, oh, I look like this in my singlet or when I'm benching, someone's looking at my crotch or when I'm squatting, someone's looking at my butt, whatever. They are, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> they wanted to look at it anyway, so it's fine. Yeah. Like, don't, don't be self-conscious about yourself. It's okay. And I really feel like this sport taught me that, like, like it's, you don't have to look perfect and it's not about looking perfect. It's about being strong and, and embracing who you are. I love it. I absolutely love it. And let's be honest about the singlet. If I'm going to have to be in a singlet, I'd rather be a woman in a singlet than a man in a singlet. I'm I've just, seen some things. <laughs> throw that out there. So singlets are they are just not nice. They're just they, not they, nice. They are not nice. I, no. I don't even wear shorts in the summertime. <laughs> Me either. Oh, I, hate them, I live in Texas. <laughs> Yeah. Ugh, Barry growled at me because he gets mad that I don't wear shorts because he likes for me to wear shorts, but I hate shorts. I hate shorts. I hate shorts. They're the worst. And and Rich, <laughs> Rich makes fun of me because I always wear high socks. And he's like, you might as well be pairing, wearing pants. No shit. <laughs> uh. 
why do you think I have them on? Yes. You won't catch me at a meet without socks, let me tell you what. <laughs> Bright green and the pretty purple. And yes, that's another thing that I love about you at meets is you're always so colorful and so like yeah. just seeing you is happy. Like it, even if you're having a stressful day, like your, your colors and your dress and your just, just you, it, it, there's, there's a happiness about you. And I love um, literally at work, like, like <laughs> literally at work, like people know who I am because like I wear flowers in my hair and I wear bows and I have like, you know, spooky <clears throat> earrings and like all, you know, I just, I feel like it's a lot harder for people to yell at me when I have a bow on my head. <laughs> well, and maybe that's, that's dirty warfare. <coughs> Barry said that's dirty warfare. It is. <laughs> she she works in retail, so I do, man. You gotta you gotta do what you gotta do to get by. <laughs> Especially now. Yeah. Well, people nice. are so mean. <laughs> Well, is there anything else that you want to add to this meeting? I love you. I love you too. <laughs> I'm so glad you sat down. And I hope that it wasn't too bad because I know you were crazy nervous. I sent you a message and said, hey, I'd like to interview. And your response was, oh, God. <laughs> like, oh, it's no. me. You know me. It's just <laughs> us talking. Yeah. yeah. No, it was fine. It was not that bad. <laughs> yeah. I try not to make it too bad. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> so is there anything else you want to add? Anything, you know, just in general? <clears throat> I, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, just be who you are and, and have fun. And on the days when you don't feel like going, still show up. That's the best advice I got for you. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you so much. I really appreciate you sitting down with me and I hope that there's no hives or throwing up involved because I know how nervous you get. Not today. No puking today. I love you. Talk to me as the Arnold though. I'll definitely be throwing up. I'll talk to you the day before you compete because that's when we get to talk and have fun. The day of competing, yes. I'm just going to kind of leave you to yourself. Although I might call you the night before, remind you to not lock your keys in the vehicle or take a spare key or... I'm definitely giving everybody like keys. keys yeah, and the day before, just pass key out to everybody and be like, um, all right, who's closest with my Airbnb key? I may, I may sleep in the hallway of the Arnold with my equipment this year. Just in case. <laughs> or better yet, just give all your equipment to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you just be in, you be in charge of this. Right. <laughs> No, I'm really looking forward to the Arnold with you guys. It was, we had a blast and I'm, I'm glad that we're all getting to go back. Excuse me, yes. go back at the hiccups. So I know it's going to be so much fun. So Yay. Right, well, I'm going to end our recording and then we'll yap for just a few minutes afterwards. And, um, hey, but Mama. I did want to tell you, thank you for doing this. And I love you the mostest. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. I love you too. Hold on one second. Let's see.